Uh, my name is Dave First, from IndyCar and the NTT IndyCar Series. Happy New Year and Happy New Year to our guest who joins us from Parts Unknown. <laughs> we're going to uh, here momentarily. The driver number 27 for Andretti Autosport, the Honda powered Delara, is none other than Kyle Kirkwood. Happy New Year, Kyle. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. How's it going? Good. All right. Uh, we've got a lot to get to. We took some questions via Instagram yesterday, so we've got that lined up here in just a bit. But obviously, a, a, a you know, happy new year. It's going to be a big year for you, big year, uh, presumably, for Andretti Autosport as well, after some changes in the offseason. And, uh, uh, you know, of course, Indy Next champion from a couple of years ago, returning to Andretti Autosports. You, you walk into that facility, you look around, you see everybody, you know everybody. Uh, so there's certainly there's some familiarity there. But uh, just some general thoughts about going back to Andretti Autosport and, and finally getting ready for 2023. You know, it's it's going to be an amazing opportunity for me. Um, I'm so glad the way everything has panned out. I mean, obviously, back in 2021, um, when there was thoughts of Colton Herta going to F1, uh, there was potential for that 26 car to be open. That's why I was doing those tests in there. And then Obviously, it didn't pan out. So, um, and then I had a uh, I had a very happy home with AJ Foyt Racing. Um, se seemingly, from the start of the season, we were really, really good. And then we kind of degraded a little bit as the season went on. But uh, I'm super happy to come back with Andretti Autosport to finally have that chance with them in IndyCar. You know, I've known the Andretti family for many years now, um, especially JF Gorman for for those who who don't know him he's he's kind of one, one of the main guys there and he's uh we were put in contact together back in kind of my karting days and uh he's kind of nurtured me up through the ladder system and helped me to get the ride in dandy lights with them and um yeah i mean i'm i'm excited for it like you said there's some big changes that are happening within the team there's a lot of development that's going on there's a lot more people that are involved now there's new engineers there's new mechanics and um, but actually, for, for the most part, my crew on the 27 car is identical to what Rossi had last year. So um, it's going to be – it'll be good to have all that experience and kind of get – they'll give me some, I guess, some leeway or, or not leeway, but some, some headway and teach me through all the reins and stuff like, uh, like an Andretti Autosport driver needs to be taught. So – uh, I'm looking forward to it. It's a happy new year now. So we're just getting into the, into the swing of things. You know, it's 23 is now, now underway. Um, we actually just announced today that, uh, or we as in Vassar Sullivan and Lexus and I, we announced that I'll be driving in the 12 car for them in Daytona, which is awesome for us IndyCar drivers to get into, right? Uh, there's a, lo a lot of time off between the last race of the season to the beginning. It's about five months. So doing anything we can to stay uh, sharp and physically fit um, in a race car is obviously very beneficial. So happy to be doing that as well. I was going to ask you about the Rolex 24. Yep. Uh, very exciting. And like you said, it kind of, it kind of knocks off the, the rust a little bit to get you, you know, ready for the 2023 NTT IndyCar series season. That, yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. And that's why we all do it. Um, and it's a lot of fun to do that race too. You know, I mean, you're racing against a bunch of drivers that you're kind of cutthroat with when you come into the to the IndyCar series and you can kind of relax a little bit and have fun with it and you're sometimes you're actually driving with one of your competitors um in, in IndyCar so it's a it's a cool thing to do it's a it's a lot of fun and but it, it is definitely wearing on you as as a person doing a 24-hour race because it's hard to switch your mind out of a uh, sprint race mentality and then go into the night and trying to fall asleep is next to impossible so you're you're definitely worn out by the end of that race i don't know if you can see the the comments uh coming in below here i believe marco hopped on he gave you a big wave so you, <laughs> he made marco for the indy 500 right yes that, that's correct and uh I'm, I'm disappointed marco didn't call me to go fishing with him the other day i, I, think, <laughs> I imagine he was down here in, in south florida somewhere if, if i had to guess that's where, where I'm at right now, I'm in Jupiter, Florida. It's too cold for me up in Indiana, so uh, I like to spend as much time as I can down here. Uh, our friends at Bell Racing claim that you give good hugs. I'm not sure oh, what that means. I, yeah, I'm not sure what that means either, but that's, I guess that's good news for me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's talk about that. Uh, we're sitting here in Indianapolis, by the way. If you're not uh, in Indy right now, it's like 60 degrees. Uh, it feels like... Oh, that's not that bad. Uh, I'm in Jupiter right now. It's, uh, it's 82 out right now. I was going to say, we still haven't seen 
expecting the sun in like two months though, because these are winter. It's winter time right. in Indiana, so that's look. But you're down in South Florida. Uh, you recently moved everything to Indy. Is that correct? Uh, Ish. moved everything is. Uh, I, I, I guess that's that's a little bit aggressive, but um, I. I've got a place in Indiana now. Um, I'll be spending obviously a lot more time there come summer. And well, I guess really the month of April and then rolling into the month of May, obviously spending a ton of time there. Um, and through the summer months that we're racing kind of around uh, Indiana. So, which is kind of what I did this year, but I actually have my own place this year. Uh, last year I, I spent, uh, I spent a lot of time in Chris Wheeler's guest room for, for those who don't know Chris Wheeler, he's a, uh, Patricio Ward spotter, and he was uh, had a bell bell helmets for a long time, so uh, he was nice enough to let me have his guest room for a while. Well, there's there's a special uh, experience right there. You're hanging out with Chris Wheeler for a weekend. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And some of the other comments too. I know there's a lot of a lot of talk about Ken Block, and, and my God, uh, what a stud, uh, what a legacy that that he has not only left, uh, certainly. Uh, you know, when it comes to sports car racing, but racing in general, did you know Ken at all? Did you know, did you follow his I, career? I didn't, you know, I, I went to, I went to a couple rally cross races, but you know, when I was probably, I forget when the Jim Connor stuff came out, but when I was probably 11, 12 years old, if uh, you knew who Ken Block was just from his YouTube videos and kind of what he brought to racing and the pureness that he was able to, bring along with it you know was was something new and um i mean he's gonna be dearly missed you know he's he's done so much for the sport if if you're in racing you know who he is um and i can't think of a single person that has anything bad to say about that person so it's definitely a tragic loss um and, and i mean i guess for now we just we leave his family in peace and yeah. hope that they can get through this in in a timely matter because it's i'm sure it's so difficult for them yeah uh, our, certainly our thoughts and prayers from the IndyCar side uh, to his friends yeah. and family is tragic is, is the best way to describe that. Yep. Uh, it, it, tell me, you, you talked about this a little bit earlier, but tell me about some of the advantages uh, about rejoining Andretti Autosport. And first and foremost among them, I guess, is that you've got experience when you look around with your teammates with, with Colton and mm -hmm. on Devlin's been around this for a year now, so there's a lot of information sharing. I would assume uh, that's going to be happening this year. Yeah, certainly. You know, I mean, that's uh, that's going to be the biggest benefit to me. You know, I've never really had a group of drivers on the team that I'm able to base things off of consistently every single time we go on track, and um, it's something that I'm that I'm really looking for. At, le at least since the karting days for me. Right. Um, I mean, when I was in kart. I used to have oh, Renus VK was a teammate of mine. Oliver Askey was a teammate. There's a handful of other drivers that were coming up that didn't really make it into cars, but were just as good as us. Um, and to have, have that group of people around you that are able, that you're able to base things off of is super, super important. And it kind of just elevates everyone and pushes everyone to be better. And, um, but I mean, the list of advantages can just go on and on with the team like Andretti Autosport from the magnitude that they have, the reputation that they have to the people that work there and the people that want to work there, um, the development that they have, the resources that they have. It just, it just goes on and on and on. And um, to be able to utilize it after spending a year in the sport, or I guess in IndyCar and honing in on my skills, understanding how race strategy works, how the car operates, how, the tires that the Firestone tires um, want to come in on certain races because we have different tires based on which track we go to. Um, there's so many different things that I learned this year that I'll be able to take into the team as well. And um, I know for a fact, it's a, it's a, it's a good time for both of us to come together. Hey, what did you learn from your rookie year last year? And, and I'll just throw out uh, a, a couple of the key races that you had. I mean, who can forget, you know, the laps you led at Texas, uh, although you, you, you had the accident and you finished mm -hmm. 20th race, best finish was 10th at Long Beach, 13th at Portland. I mean, there's several lessons throughout the course of the year that I know you'll, you'll carry on to uh, into 2023. Yeah, uh, no doubt. You know, I mean, there's, there's a ton and a lot of it is understanding race strategy. Um, that, that was the most difficult thing for me to, to start to understand and understanding where you're at, at who, who you're actually racing. Sorry, well, in terms 
terms of what race strategy what, the, a little deeper diet what does that mean so for for me what i didn't understand when i started started off is for instance like st petersburg first race of us of the year for us of the year and it was a split strategy between half of the field and, and the other half right. and i just had i had no i no idea who i was actually racing you know there's cars around me that were in contention for a position and some of them weren't and trying to understand the strategies and how they're going to play out and being able to almost call strategy from my end um it's something that i feel like i've gotten better at as the season went on knowing you know a lot of times you're kind of you're throwing um you're th throwing out a shot in, into the dark right and you have to kind of predict what the track's going to do obviously it's calculated but sometimes it changes on the fly and as a driver you need to understand that and i feel like as the season has gone on i've progressed a lot in that in that sense and um, i'll be able to carry that into this year obviously that's all important stuff it's all about yeah. growing yeah. as a driver uh and race race craft and all that sort of thing so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all right well uh, we've got some questions here from uh, instagram that we solicited yesterday <laughs> Uh, among them, how about some expectations for this year? What what do you what do you want to happen? What do you see happening? You know, that's, that's such a common question that I get that I really don't know how to answer. Um, expectations for me, I mean, they they change based on what weekend it is, right? right. Um, what conditions there are, um, where you're at in points, where uh, where your pace stacks up compared to the field and practices, where you are in qualifying, it it all always changes, but. For me, um, coming up from literally the start of my racing career, I've always had expectations to go out and try to win races. And um, and I feel like, like having Andretti by my side and being, being with them, that that gives me an opportunity every single weekend that we go on track. And that was honestly something, that was one of the most difficult things. If you were to ask me, what was the most diff difficult thing that I encountered this year? It was that. It was the fact that I would go out on track and we would be fighting for top tens and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And for me, I'm still in the mentality that I want to go and win. And people would look at, oh, he's in sixth or seventh right now. He's doing an amazing job. But all I want is more. You know, I'm always never satisfied until you get until you get wins. And um, that was that was one of the most difficult things for me to me to understand this year. Because if you look back through my car career and through my karting and stuff, I've probably won close to 40% of races per season. Yeah. Um, so it's uh, it was a big change for me, no doubt. Well, and, and, and to your point, I mean, let's talk about the three developmental series that lead into mm -hmm. the NTD. Because, I mean, you're the only driver to win a championship in each one of those things. And so uh, it's not a reset, or maybe it is, but when you get to, the, to this level um, – there's just so many things to learn um, mm -hmm. and, and be overcome at the, at the same time. So it is difficult, right? It's well, it's super, super difficult because you look at the IndyCar field, it is absolutely stacked from head to toe. I mean, for me, even I was in 23rd, 24th place sometimes, and I'm fighting for these positions. Like it's, we're going for a world championship race, you know? Um, and you just, you don't have, have that in the lower levels so it's like you you get about two or three of those drivers in the lower levels that are exceptional and those are the ones that move on to indycar but once you get to indycar that's what the entire field is yeah so you kind of you kind of have to manage your expectations based on who you're racing against um which which has all been a learning curve for me no doubt uh next question who's your best friend in the paddock Ooh, that's a good question um I would say at the at the moment I would say Benjamin Peterson is at at, at, the, at this moment we we spend a lot of time together we we go to dinner together we play pickleball together um, he's actually coming down to South Florida tomorrow to go karting with me and his driver coach from this past year in Indy Lights Jonathan George was also my driver coach this year so we've gotten along very well um, he comes from a great family and he's obviously driving for AJ Foyt Racing this year and sat on my pit stand for a lot of this year. So, um, which I believe for most people was kind of expected that he'd be going there. Yeah. How, how do you think he'll do as a, as a rookie? Um, you know, I'm unsure. There's a lot of things changing within the Foyt organization, all for, I hope the better. 
um, se seemingly it is from talking to him and talking to my driver coach and talking to his father, talking to Larry. Um, there's a lot of things that are ha happening and I assume it's, it's going to be all really good things for him. And um, I, I wish him the best. Um, he is an exceptional driver. He's very, very smart, very calculated. And um, I think him having time on our stand all this year to understand the race strategy and understand how people mingle within the team is really going to help them as well. I mean, you know, I mean, you talk, that's a hell of an internship, really. You know, if you're hanging out no doubt. Yeah. all year. Um, all right. So what is, next question here, what is your favorite course to race? And is it the same or different than your favorite course to watch uh, a race? Hmm. That is a one question. great question. <laughs> well, which, I mean, which, the, no doubt for any race fan, I think, think in the world, the Indy 500 has to be at the top of their list um, for a race to spectate. And it's not only just the race, it's everything that happens around the race, right? The event, there's 300,000 plus people there. Um, the whole pre-race ceremony, everything that builds up to the race is absolutely incredible. And it's the, and I've been to a lot of races in my life and obviously, and um, growing up and going to all these races, going to F1 races, going to IndyCar races, that was always the one that was like, it, it almost puts you, you in tears how incredible it is and the first time that you go and sit in the stands and watch an indy car go through turn one or turn three or any any of the four corners really at 230 miles per hour it's just like this this isn't possible um and i still get that to this day right i'll go on track like there was there was a moment this year where we're testing um it was in the month of may in the middle of the month of may and it was super windy there wasn't a lot of people going on track so I decided, I'm like, you know, I'm going to go watch up in the stands for a little while and see exactly kind of what, what is happening with the car and maybe get a different perspective on everything. And watching, I, th I think it was Ferrucci go through turn three. I was sitting up with my spotter, watching him go through turn three. I'm just, he was the only one on track. I'm just like, this is absolutely mind blowing that my car looks the same as his car going through here. I, I just can't believe it every time I go and see it. Uh, but honestly, for for me, the, my favorite track to race on is Mid Ohio, um, mm -hmm. hands down. I've always loved that track. It's the track that I've got the most time on. Um, it's a track that I've had the most success on. Usually, that goes hand in hand. Um, right. But I don't I don't know what it is about it. It's just got so much character that I absolutely love, and I love that we're going to continue to keep going back there. Well, that's one of those tracks too, where it's it's a flowy race track. But if you if you mess up one sector of it you're chasing it the rest of the way and it usually doesn't pan out very well yes right? I mean, you... that is correct there's uh there's not a lot of room for uh there's not a lot of forgiveness at that at that race at that racetrack if you make a mistake which i i actually enjoy that's that's something about indycar that i think everyone in motorsports kind of cherishes about it is that it's so pure and if you were to make a mistake there's not there's no no room there's no margin for error and um that's what makes us all so good i think as well one of the things i'm going back to your comment about indianapolis motor speedway and the 500 and the pre-race and you know it's if you i'm telling you what if you get emotional now how old are you right now 23 no i'm 24 20, i just turned 24 in october 24 in october all right so yeah. if you get emotional when you're 24 before the before the race, to, it, I'm telling you, as you get older, those emotions only become more intense. Really? You know, okay. I mean, I I, I remember uh, Dario. The first couple of years, he came to the 500, and he got it, you know, and he understood it. But I'm I'm telling you, as he or Kanan or any of the older guys, uh, as they did more and each each and every year, just the 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 because it's is it, there's nothing like it on the planet Earth. Free race for the Indy 500, and my goodness, uh, for you and others like you who've been able to race in the Indianapolis 500, it is, it just doesn't get any better than that, you know, so. Yeah, yeah, and, and honestly, I am so glad that I've been able to, or I've been fortunate enough to go to that race yeah. before ever doing it, you know, and seeing it as a spectator and understanding how big of a deal it is before just showing up to the race, it's a, uh, it's made me appreciate it a lot more. And um, I, ho I hope what you're saying is true. I hope uh, my emotion to it only keeps building as, as my age goes on. It, it only gets more intense. Just trust me. <laughs> Doesn't Good.
now that I'm a liar. So that's fine. I, I can handle it. <laughs> uh, all right. Another question. How do you stay motivated and maintain your fitness level throughout the season? Throughout the season? Um, motivation is, uh, is pr for me, that's pretty easy. Well, I, actually, honestly, both of them are pretty easy because we're nonstop, right? What, once, once May rolls around, we're nonstop. Yeah. There's, there's not much time to breathe. I mean, I stay motivated because I'm just hungry for more always, right? I, I, don't, I don't know why. I, I can't really explain it. But every weekend I get into it, I just absolutely zone in or focus in on exactly what needs to be done. And that's what keeps me motivated every single weekend. Fitness-wise, um, it's actually – I find it a little bit easier in season because you actually become car fit. Uh, there's a lot of muscles within the car that you – can't really replicate one of those being your neck yeah. um so, some of it is, is strange muscles in your arms as well that it's hard to replicate in a gym um but w once you're in the car every single weekend and you're driving three times a week it's pretty easy to stay fit what what i find is is the difficult part is when you go into the off season when you go five months out of the year without getting in an indy car and pulling three three and a half g's through a corner your neck starts to get very tired uh, as soon as you go on track and it can actually catch you off because you lose a lot of feel and a lot of depth perception based on where your head is mm. inside the car. And if you start using the head race, rest, it becomes an issue. Um, so, and I find that you cannot do enough neck straight training in a gym. Um, when it comes to driving any car, you can kind of only maintain a little bit of your fitness when, when it comes to neck straights. So I, I do a lot of, um, what, what I use is an iron neck where you literally just, you're pretty much hanging on, on to 35 pounds on your head and trying to hold it stable for a while, doing small movements and whatnot. Um, something similar that would be in the car, but at the same time, you just can't replicate what you do in the car. And that's always the issue when you get into the car for the first time, which for us will be at thermal yeah. um, on the second and third. For sure, most of the drivers, if you go and talk to them halfway through the day and be like, oh, how you feeling out there? And you ask about their neck strength, they're all going to be like, oh, yeah, it's definitely getting pretty tired already. Like, it, that's what happens when you, you don't drive for a while. So it's, it's kind of a normality. I'm, I'm not sure people understand how physical, physically demanding it is uh, to be in the car. Because you see, you know, as a spectator, you see a car come to the corner. It, it seems not that it's easy, but I don't think it really translates well into how difficult things could be. And I'll never forget. You know, your, your teammate, Roman, first time he hopped in a car at Barber Motorsports Park, there's no, there no power steering. You know, there's a lot of upper body strength it takes to get these cars mm -hmm. through the corner. Uh, and he remarked about how, how difficult uh, it is to, to get these cars to, to handle or, you know, uh, respond the way you want to. And so it does yep. take for you guys to. So you've got a test, obviously, the open test is at Thermal. You would mentioned that, the, at, uh, well, in a month's time. Uh, anywhere else you guys going to test before you hit uh, St. Pete? Uh, um, you know, I'm I'm not quite sure yet. Um, well, I, I I have an idea, but I don't know if I'm allowed to say. Okay, don't uh, say. Um, so, <laughs> so don't um, get. But I, I don't no. think it's confirmed, so I'm not going to get myself in trouble here. But usually, we do go and test outside of the the official test. Yes, before the first race of the year. All right. Um, we talked a little bit about you moving from South Florida to to Indy. Um, tell us about life down there in Jupiter a little bit. Uh, surfing, deep sea fishing, what else do you like to do? Um, man, uh, I do everything on the water down here. Um, I, I said another thing earlier, which I've gotten really into recently, which is pickleball. Um, it's got, it's <laughs> not gonna lie, it's, it's kind of an old person sport. It's not like tennis, you're not moving around that much, but uh, it's a ton of fun and it's pretty easy to learn. So, me. Oliver Askew, Logan Sargent, um, Danny Formal, who races in IMSA now. Uh, we've all kind of picked it up, and we've been having some fun with it. Um, so, yeah, but it, I spend as much time as I can on the water, whether it's surfing, fishing, diving, um, free diving, uh, right. kite, paddle boarding, li literally anything, snorkeling, but whatever it is. Um, I like to do it on the water. Obviously, you don't get much time in Indiana to go do that <laughs> unless you want to go drive to a lake or something, right? Um, so, yeah, I mean, that, that's kind of – that's that's the gist of my life down here is, is going to the gym and then 
going out in the water to the beach or whatever it might be and, and spending time on it or time doing whatever the weather from, permits on that day. Yeah, it's not like you're going to snorkel in Geist Reservoir, so. No, I don't, I, I don't think so. <laughs> do, do you have certain spots there in, in the, you know, off the, uh, off the coast you like to go to with snorkel or something like that? Uh, well, I mean, of course, most, most of the beaches here in Florida are all sand beaches yeah. and it's pretty hard to find any reefs or structures unless, um, unless they're kind of artificial. Um, but there is one area here in Jupiter, Florida, it's called Coral Cove that, um, I like to go to because it's, it's actually rocks that are right up on the beach and you can swim out to it and there's always sea turtles and stingrays and random fish and whatever it might be that that you can kind of swim around with and they're kind of used to people there so it's um it's fun because they don't get too skittish so um that's one place if i was just to go snorkeling but i spend a lot of time if i go out fishing or or diving or free diving or something i spend a lot of time actually in the bahamas because it's only about a 55 mile shot over from from palm beach um you can take a ferry there you take your own boat over there people that even take jet skis over there from, from Florida. Really? Um, yeah. I mean, they're crazy. I, I would never do that, but, <laughs> but you can do that. I'm saying you can. And, um, but the, over there, it's just, uh, it's, it's, it's obviously a different country, but it actually feels like it. it's only 50 miles away, but the reefs are amazing. The fishing is phenomenal. It's easy to access. The people there are wonderful. And, um, it's an, it's a nice getaway for anyone here on the coast of, or the east coast of Florida that are able to go over there. All right, and last thing, pickleball. I, I mean, I've heard is there like started or something? I mean, is, enough of you guys. Can, uh, I can see like a tournament happening somewhere, or you know, just 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 a thought. Well, well, we we get pretty competitive with it. I'm not gonna lie, but uh, I mean, it's it's all of us drivers, right? We already have a massive competitive edge, and. Yeah. Uh, um, there's a, there's a lot of drivers that are picking it up. I think uh, Christian Lungard does it now. Obviously, I said Benjamin Peterson does it with me. Um, I'm sure there's some other drivers that do it. And um, it's a growing sport. And I think there's a lot of professional athletes that I think like LeBron James has a team. And yeah. there's some crazy people that are owning teams now. And uh, it's, a, it's a growing sport. So, And it's something else to do that keeps us mentally um, competitive. Yeah. Good hand, if you will. It's all of it. Yeah, right? that that is well. I mean, it, it's and it's something fun, you know. I always like to find activities that I do. Um, well, it, it, anything that I fun that I find fun that is an activity, I like to do as much as possible, right? Because that's just something that will help me in the race car down the road. Um, so yeah, and th and that's one of them. I, I'm telling you, it's if pickleball. What, what what I mean? How would you describe it? It's like tennis, but you're not moving as much. It's like like really big ping pong <laughs> that's what that's what i would kind of i'd base it off of um there's a little bit different rules but you're playing like with a with a wiffle ball right that's right. just got holes all in it so you hit it as hard as you can and it just stops so it's easy for the player adjacent from you to to hit it back um so it's uh it it is yeah it's an easy sport it's not that hard it's not that hard at all but it is a lot of fun but it's not all old people because i was having this conversation yesterday actually, as a matter of fact talking about pickleball it's i mean it, it has grown you can be in your teens up until your 60s 70s 80s playing this it's it's so from that aspect it's pretty cool well it's it's actually it, that yeah that too i mean there's a lot of young people that are getting into it now but you actually i'll go to a court right like for, for instance logan Sargent and i went to a court about three days ago and we got absolutely smoked by this older couple <laughs> And it was, it was, it was heartbreaking. It was honestly heartbreaking. We're like looking at each other, like we're two professional athletes and we just got ruined by these people that are in their late seventies. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, they played for years. Right. And now it's like younger people are getting into it. So, I mean, it was, it was definitely a humbling moment for both of us the other day. <laughs> That's awesome. All right. Uh, the NTT IndyCar series coming to a town near you and pickleball as yeah. well. So yes. look forward to that. Hey, uh, Thanks so much for your time. Uh, thanks for doing this. Happy New Year. Likewise. Uh, can't wait to see you at, uh, at the Thermal Club for test number one in this uh, 2023 season. Awesome. Thank you so much. Appreciate it, Dave. Uh, thanks, everybody, for joining us. See you soon.